Hey everyone, it's Army Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. Welcome to an exclusive first look at the brand new monster, Vastas. I am super excited about this monster because this is our very first monster, our very first mythic monster with a regular skill utilizing the pierce mechanic. So this monster can give himself pierce and then attack. So it's going to be exciting to see how powerful, how formidable this monster is in the current Monster Legends meta. So he is as a child, as an adult, and his ultimate attack, which also does pierce, and is actually quite overpowered, I would say. So yeah, let's start with that. But before that, I want to give a huge thanks and a huge shout out to Social Point for giving me the chance to make this video. They provided all the vassals I need to take this monster all the way to rank 5, all the food, everything I need to make this video. This monster will be sold after I am done reviewing this monster. With that being said, let's talk about his ultimate first of all, and then we'll talk about stats and everything else. So Dinner in Hell applies pierce to itself. Pierce, for those of you that are new to the game, ignores all defensive status effects such as evasion, mirror, shields, taunts, area dodge. So let's go through each of them. If a monster has evasion, this monster does not care. This monster will still attack you. You know, recently Lawn Rider was introduced into the game with a skill called um, Sun Protection, which gives the monster dodge area and evasion and positive effect protection. So if you want to hit that monster, you need to somehow get rid of the positive effect protection and then the evasion. If you want to hit it with the AoE, you got to get rid of dodge area. It is a handful. This monster can just be like, nope, I'm gonna ult you and attack you. It's crazy. Um, mirrors basically if a monster has damage mirror, you're not gonna get damage reflected. If a damage has skill mirror, it won't be reflected right back to you. Um, all shields the enemy monsters may have. Taunts, if if you battle against monster that has taunts, armor claw, urder, unspeakable, anyone with taunts, you do not have to single target that monster. If a monster has mega taunts, such as Daedalus, you don't have to target that monster, you can target whoever you want with Pierce. And then Area dodge we also talked about, if a monster normally can get hit with AoE, Dinner in Hell does not care, it will still attack everyone. So, Dinner in Hell, um, fantastic ultimate, right? You deal heavy earth damage to everyone, on top of that you stun all the enemy monsters. So this is a pierce AoE denial. Now fortunately it's just an ultimate and the likelihood of it, well that's not true, sometimes in war you get hit with the ult and then you cry because you lose. So this is the kind of ultimate that I think could change the course of a game. If you're fighting this monster and he's on defense and you don't kill him and he gets an ult, you could be in trouble because all your monsters, if they're not immune to stun, they risk getting stunned. So you have to watch out for that. So yeah, wanted to start off with that skill. Uh, let's go over his stats. His power is 5896. This is a pretty impressive power. It is actually tied with that of Nor, Nightingale, Metal Bee, Unspeakable, Brutalizer, and Cawthor, which is overall the second power in the game. Still currently, the highest power stat belongs to RML with a power stat of 5951. As for the life stats, 55494, this is actually slightly less than average. It's tied with that of Lonrad, Urken, and Kralik. And similar can be said for the speed stat, it is slightly less than average, tied with that of Cybrow and Metal Beach, just for some reference. But I mean, there in hell, I can't get over it. Um, the traits, so like all mythic monsters, has an evolving trait. Unranked, you get hardened, which is just an umbrella 20% less accuracy against all status effects. You know, it's a good trait to have, just an umbrella kind of thing. It, 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 um, it applies to negative effects, it applies to torture, it applies to denial. At rank 1 you get blind immunity, which in my personal opinion is not necessarily the best kind of trait you can have. It does protect against the minor blind, the regular blind, and total blind, but then now you're still susceptible to the main forms of denial, you know, the freeze, the stun, and the possession. Again, it's a really good thing that you have the hardened umbrella trait. And then at rank 3 you get a self trait protection and it's a status caster so this can be removed with a positive effect removal and honestly I'm not I don't, I don't think it adds too much value because if anything you're just protecting the hardened if this monster would have had like immune to stun and then a permanent self trait protection that would have been a different story right because then even the alt couldn't pierce through a trait protection hardened immunity so I'm sorry um stun immunity so I'm not the biggest fan of it. This is the kind of monster I don't think you needed to get him to rank 3 to utilize him at his full potential. I mean, obviously the reason to rank up this monster is to just increase the stats so he can deal more damage with his pure skills, which we'll talk about. But I think at rank 1, you get the biggest benefit of this monster with that blind immunity because that will come in handy uh, depending who you're battling, right? So, um, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see a future monster maybe um, social point can introduce is a future monster that just has immunity against um, accuracy reduction skills. That'd be interesting. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and take this monster to level 100 and utilize him. Oh, I love the name, Papa. So here's the thing. In a previous video, I mentioned, the Muchi video, I mentioned I would do two parts. I would showcase the monster at level 100, and then I would showcase the monster at level 
um, 150, a fully ranked up rank 5. However, I am currently in Legendary 3 League with over 6.6k trophies, so I may not be able to do that. I will still showcase in this video. I'll do an attack at level 100, I'll do another attack at level 130, um, just for the different traits. But again, the only thing that really changes are the stats. So because I'm in a high league, I kind of need them ranked up. As opposed to if someone is like in Legendary 4 League, you can kind of use him at level 100 and 110. So, yeah, um, he, here he is fully old up. Oh, let's take a look at Relics. So I had predicted that he was going to hold two swords or a sword and an armor. Let's see which it was. Oh, what it is. It's actually two sword relics. Very interesting. I mean, the stuff you can do, right? Double cane sword. After damaging with a skill of Tari's life is below 50%, it deals special damage. So if two of them trigger, that can be 24k extra damage. And after damaging with a skill of Warrior's life is below 50, so he can heal 62. And if you're holding four, that's, gosh, that's like 240k um, healing. That's crazy with Cane Sword. Um, so I only have one Cane Sword. I also have a Jakugan Sword. But if you have Laser Beam Sword, um, honestly, whatever you have, just give him the Sword Relic. Let's see that Laser Beam Sword, by the way. Um, only exclusive right here. So after damaging with a skill deals... Um, this will be like 12,000 points of magic damage and when the turn starts increases warrior's power Which obviously as an attacker with a pierce skill um, that that would probably be the best way to go about it Or you can do if you have laser beam sword and of course and of course your cane sword Let's see only missing not only missing only owned and of course your cane sword That could be a good way to have a sword that can recover you in case you're low on life because again this monster has a slower than a, a slightly less than average life stat. So whoops, that's dumb. I don't like that you can do that all right, let's, for now, we have to go to Kugan Swords since that's all I have. And, of course, if you have the Gold Swords, just utilize whatever you have at your disposal. All right, let's go through the skills. We got we got to make sure we go through all of them. So, tell the weak he's strong. Deals heavier damage to one enemy. I got to say, it's impressive. A spamble skill. You know, there's a lot of monsters that activate cooldowns. A lot of players have access to Saiya Mist, the previous Thunder Team Race monster. Um, it's nice to have an elemental advantage over that Thunder monster, by the way. So it's nice to have a spammable heavy earth damage skill. There's going to be some bases I imagine the half I miss, so we can showcase this skill. He'll become the strongest deals low earth damage. I don't think this will be worth running. Whereas again, tell the weak he's strong. This is a skill you could utilize, especially for Saiyan miss. Also in the earth category, Guy Daigo has can activate your cooldown, so it could be worth using. All right, come back with a sword. Deals moderate earth damage to all enemies. Applies quicksands to all enemies. So quicksand will deal 15% of earth damage each turn to the enemy monsters. It lasts for four turns. And surprisingly, this only has a one turn cooldown. That is pretty cool. All right, let's see. Don't refuse this offer. Applies protect positive effects to itself. Applies damage boots to itself and requires cooldown. The positive effect protection and the damage boost both last three turns. So positive effect protected, for those of you that may not know, basically protects all positive effects except the status protection itself, which means if the enemy monster removes your positive effects and you have this on, let's say you use this skill, you will keep the damage boost and you will lose the protection. So this skill combined with the pierce mechanic, and we'll test it out, it will allow you to keep your pierce. Another reason this skill might be worth running is because it is a self skill. So once again, you do not have immunity to possession. So it's nice that if you were to get possessed, there is a chance you could use, you could use this self skill and just help you set up for your next attack. All right, the force is with us. 46 stamina, two turn cooldown. This is heavier damage to all enemies. Uh, the biggest reason to run this skill would be to take on those pesky, pesky Megaton monsters. Unfortunately, you won't be able to take on Daedalus with this because it's just that earth on earth damage. So it's going to be 50% weaker. But if it's anyone else, uh, maybe it's a Mr. Beast that activated his Megatons. Maybe you're still fi fighting Azul or Centurions. You'll likely be able to OTK with the forces with us. Honestly, if you probably have a level 110... When Vasta's going over, going against a 130 Izo running life runes, you might be able to OTK. So hopefully we can find a base. I don't think we will, but we will look. We are warriors. Here is the skill. This is the skill of skills. Applies Pierce to itself, deals massive special damage. Massive special damage removes Pierce from itself. So again, if you have the positive effects protection, you will keep the Pierce. Again, we will showcase that. But the, the reason this is huge is because you can now target the enemy dodge area monsters in the background that are partnering up with taunt monsters like Erder specifically. So here's the thing. Um, while it is it is powerful now that you can attack whoever you want with this skill, how meta is it going to be? Because right now, if you kill Gracon, you still have Revival Relic. If you kill um, Wormlad, he still has Revival Relic, so they can still resurrect. So even though you kill them, they'll still come back to life. I think the biggest hindrance this will be against is Hornets. Now, Hornet has dodge area and anticipation, 
now you can actually kill that hornet thanks to your pierce mechanic. So that's going to be interesting to see. And we're definitely going to run it. This is the must-have skill. It's, it's the skill of skills. My gosh, massive damage. That's why it has a high stamina cost 43 and a high 3 turn cooldown. All right, Lawn Red has a problem. Deals heavier damage to an enemy, applies stun and daze to an enemy. I mean, it's always nice to be an attacker with a singular stun skill. The fact that you can deny and it also dazes on top of that, that's awesome. So if in case you can't kill someone, right? If you have to mobilize, you'll mobilize. Let's say you're facing a Miserus who can revive. You know what? Just stun that Miserus. Um, I mentioned in a previous video, I would have loved if this skill had Pierce. That way you could stun Lonrad. You know, it would make perfect sense. Stop Lonrad from um, from reviving and get through the sun protection. But it is what it is. So we are warriors. Honestly, this might be able to OTK Lonrad depending on the runes. Alright, so right now we're running this, this, and let's see. The lead of the world deals moderate earth damage, applies days. I'm not a big fan of this. It, yeah, it applies days, which is damage reduction and accuracy reduction. But I feel like I'd rather have the quicksand. Or I feel like I'd rather have the heavy earth damage more than anything. So we'll see. We'll see. Alright, deals heavy earth. So for now... Alright, so in terms of skill set, I think We Are Warriors and Lawnrun has a problem. These two would be your must. Honestly, more than anything, We Are Warriors. That is your must skill. Um, I don't know how often you'll actually use Don't Refuse This Offer. Maybe if you can turn transfer into this monster, that would be a situation. Or if you're in a situation where you're going to get possessed, you know, run it just in case you can use it. But I, I feel like most of the time you're going to be doing the pure skill first and OTKing. Or you're going to do the AoE skill and just deal a lot of damage to everyone. Potentially, you might want to do the quicksand skill to quicksand. But here, here's my rule. When an attacker monster has a high power stat and you're going to put strength runes, you don't really need the dot damage. You want more of that single based attack. You want you, you will get more out of the heavy earth damage than you will the moderate earth damage plus the quicksand. Maybe. So it's worth testing both. So for now, we're going to re remove Don't Refuse This Offer and we're just going to test damage output with this monster. So let's give them some high level... A uh, strength rune. So we will go strength, and we will go strength again, and we will open that up. And you know what? Just for just to see, um, damn. No, realistically, you're gonna run this monster to strength and a speed. Um, if you can partner this monster up with an Elvira, for example, and run a triple strength and then um hit hard with the AOE, that's that's a potential thing you could do. So for now, we're just gonna test him out like this. I think he's good to go. Um, oh, what happened to the cane sword? Did it get removed? All right, so we're going to test him out right now in the adventure map. So let's see his damage output. And we'll pr probably partner him up with the monsters that can give him some buff just to, you know, just to really highlight that strength. Um, so where is he? He is down here. Papa. And who is a good uh, who's a good monster to partner him up with? Um, Demise is always a good one for that quick double damage. Um, Ragnarok for that churn transfer. All right, so I think this will work out. Oh, we could also do Rossi. All right, yeah, Rossi resets cooldown, so I kind of like that more. Um, deselect. I'm trying to deselect. What the heck is going on? All right, two Ragnaroks. What? All right, so back to selecting Rossi. So here is Rossi, and um, we'll still do Demise too. All right, cool. So let's click Fight. All right, let's see. I'll start with double damage just to see how powerful it is. So here, we'll go times two. We are Warriors. So 97k, obviously it's times two thanks to the double damage. Alright, so that's like what? A little less than 50. Lonner has a problem. This is oh by the way, I should mention he's level 123, whereas these are 122. That's why there's a difference in damage outputs. So Lonner has a problem. This is a little less than 34 regularly, but it stuns. And then here is my AoE quicksand skill. And here is my other skill. So 67,000. Let's focus on this monster. See that difference? This is 45,000 on Viper Notep. And this is 67,000. So there is a 22k difference. Although in this case, since he has such a high life stat, the quicksand would be the better way to go. Um, let's just go ahead and do the stun skill. So he is stunned. All right. Now we can see my damage output um, without everything. So yeah, 22k... 33k, 11,000 difference. We are warriors. Yeah, so in this case, I think the quicksand, just because he has a tanky life, that would make the most sense. Um, let's just do um, quicksand on you. And then my relics again. Look at that. Can't, look at that. Just the relics alone were able to kill the allies. Almost kill the allies. The quicksand will finish them off. Um, let's just do the forces with us. There we go. Um, light within for a little damage buff. And here is the pure skill. 
we are warriors and look i mean there's not really much to see right so here let's show that pierce mechanic skill and um, with the protect positive effect just to see if we can do it oh cool the um both earth monsters are together so let's replace forces with us with don't refuse this offer for now so we might keep the quicksand skill especially because mythic monsters tend to be super super tanky right it's a good it's a good showcase of that so um this is perfect i'll do strength from beyond i will do don't refuse this offer so this is my self skill and then here we'll go times one so again we are warriors applies pierce to itself and then removes pierce at the end let's do we are warriors and see we are warriors blocked so now you get to keep the pierce skill for the next three turns i have pierce so right that's dangerous now that he has pierce um i'm able to use my skills let's say they had some sort of protection um i don't think they can apply i was hoping they would so now this skill would penetrate through anything and check this out i would keep my pierce and i keep my pierce for the next two turns and if they want to remove pierce they would literally have to get rid of it first which is not going to be easy so um, while it is something you could utilize i don't know if you really want to set up just to keep the pierce but it is something you, you can utilize i think the main purpose of this monster is really going to be just to single target we are warriors more than anything that is going to be the main focus so you know what for now i'm liking this skill set and again bringing your zero cooldown skill when you have a cooldown activation monster all right let's take this monster be into pvp like i said i am in legendary three gosh what am i in right now i am at 150 rank so yeah we're gonna trophy drop a lot but it's cool it's worth it for this video and i see a oh i see a santerion i see a crusty i see a miserous awesome this is really really awesome so i think the first thing i want to i want to showcase since i can is let's just bring my actually who should i bring um hmm, let me think miserous can remove positive effects i was gonna say maybe we'll bring alvira um i am curious so i, I want to make sure he gets a churn in but if he dies i want to be able to resurrect him so let's do this we will bring my mythic and earth we will bring vastas we will do elvira elvira where is elvira oh you know what i have her on defense so let me swap her out real quick and let's put elvira in here so here is my plan i want my monster to get a turn and i'm hoping he does if he dies um that's fine i will hopefully have the stamina to resurrect him and i'll resurrect for double damage we just want to see the damage output can a 100 vastas kill uh santerion i think the answer is yes there's also that 115 isol so we're about to find out right now so let's attack that middle base let's make sure i'm good yeah it doesn't matter that i have team life that um she she can probably get ltk we'll see who miserous attacks for us with dark paradox so this will be interesting to see all right we'll click fight let's go times two speed so Krusty's gonna have to recharge. So like I said, um, okay, yeah. So I die first. For beginning players who have this monster at 100, one of the best mechanics with them might be just to partner him up with Elvira, so he gets a guaranteed turn in. So we will we'll do Undead's Ritual. I am back with the double damage, and let's just go through everything. Keep in mind, I do have the double damage here. So we are Warrior steals 97k. This is a 150 and a 150. So you have to keep that in mind. These are level 150 mythic monsters that I'm battling. That's why you might be thinking, how come it's not that strong? It actually is very strong because this is a level 100 monster. Now, again, he does have the double damage. All right, Lonred has a problem. Apply stun and daze. Um, don't refuse this offer. The positive effect protection, which won't really help too much because I'll just die next turn. Uh, come back with the sword AoE quicksand. All right, so here we're seeing the AoE quicksand skill. It's not that powerful against that 130 Santerion. If I was to use it, check it out. It deals actually no, but I have the double damage. So without the double damage, you would probably not be OTKing. So yeah, there's there's that to keep in mind. Um, behavioral Christmas tree, recharge. So uh, maybe at rank one. No, even at rank one, I don't know if he would OTK. You might need him at rank two or three to to guarantee the OTK against the legendary monster. So let's see what can I do. Protecting light. Um, none of them are none of them are light so maybe this will help me out revive again so recharge and blessing now i can i can last a turn so dark paradox or maybe not if he dies paradox again so by the way i am allowed to do pvp however i'm not allowed to win the battles because it would be totally unfair for me to win with a monster that has not yet been released so unfortunately for me he's gonna dark paradox and kill me before i get a chance to resurrect again watch 
right? Oh, maybe not. Cool. So I was able to resurrect. Cool. So no more failures. We can showcase the uh, pierce mechanic here. So check this out. This monster has Megaton, right? Normally I'd have to attack him. Um, but also we can check this out again. 45 times 3. Yeah, not enough to kill him. We are warriors. If I want to, I can go ahead and just attack. Uh, let's attack Krusty. We are warriors. Look at that. I, I completely ignored the Megatons and I attacked Krusty. And there you have it. So like I said, because I'm in a high league, um, it's hard to showcase them when the monsters I'm battling are way, way out of my league. So uh, with that being said, let us exit out of this battle. And we will move on and rank him up. So he's a little more competitive, especially at the trophy league I'm at. There's a Saiyan Mist right there. There's a data list right there. Ooh, this one's actually a good showcase because even though there's a even though I'm gonna get hit with CDA, I'm gonna be able to attack Saiyan Mist. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rank this up, guys. Again, I apologize, I can't show him at level 100. But I mean, like I said, you have to showcase similar level to similar level. And in this case, you saw that he's not gonna be taking on 150s. I mean, no mythic can really take on monsters at 150. Um, so unless they are also like 130, 140, 150 themselves with high level runes. Uh, with that being said, let's rank them up. So, and the, the, the biggest reason I don't feel the need to showcase them at each individual rank up is because all that happens are stats increase, right? You gain, yeah, you gain the blind immunity. You can't really showcase that unless there's a blind monster. Yeah, you gain the, um, the trade protection. You can't really showcase that unless there's a monster that tries to remove your blind. So I don't think there's a big need for that. And by the way, in terms of, here, let me just keep ranking them up. In terms of the runes, you could also give them team speed and strength. And like I said, there's even arguments where you can give them three strength and just utilize the pierce mechanic. Again, against a wormlet and Graken, and hopefully we'll run into some. Um, you kill them, but they'll resurrect. So it's, I feel like this monster might be better on defense just because that pierce mechanic is scary. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how he influences the meta. If, he, if he's going to be a go-to or not a go-to. It's going to be interesting to see. All right, so let's take him all the way. Let's just max out his stats all the way. And that way he's he's at least fair compared to all the other monsters I'm battling right now. So we're going to get rid of Don't Refuse his offer because it's not a skill I'm really going to utilize. It's not a skill you'll really utilize much unless you have a Churn Transfer monster that can give him a Churn as soon as he does that. And then you go ahead and do your AoE skill. Because um, you're, you're not really going to do Don't Refuse his offer and then give yourself Pierce. And then some next time in the future do the force of weather that's way too long of a turn order so realistically um you're not going to use the skill as often as i think you might um you might think so let's run tell the weak he's strong and we want to do that side miss base just to kind of showcase that so i don't need you anymore actually i might need you mm, yeah actually no i want my cooldowns to be activated on turn one so i want my cooldowns to be activated i think it's it's good just to bring in worm that again for revival and I think we're good. So let's fight. And yes, I am ready. All right, cool. And look, uh, there's that Brutalizer Grakon combo. I could kill Grakon, of course. All right, so let's see. Best show on Earth. So um, I was hoping I got hit with cooldowns just to be able to, to see. Tell the weak he's strong. I mean, it is a powerful skill. When, you, when you're equal level, 150 to 150, I could even kill Nor. Oh, they are 140, however. Um, and this is with a 25% damage reduction. That's crazy. So, um, here though, I wouldn't be able to do that skill just because of Daedalus. And just to showcase how weak the AoE skill is against Daedalus, it, it is just super weak. Um, nonetheless, let me kill Nord. Let me penetrate. Actually, you see how Psy Mist still has some HP left? This is where my Sword Relics kick in. So, we are Warriors and deal a bunch of damage. Chikugan Sword kicks in, deals the extra physical damage, and then Kane Sword kicks in and deals the extra damage I need. So, I got single targeted reconstruction and yeah i mean there's not too much to the monster right it's pretty much just that here we'll turn time through back no more failures and um, this would be a case where i could get that pierce and keep it um well i, I if i did the self skill and then the pierce skill um here we will just do the aoe quicksand again not going to be that strong against data list not that effective and then we will at least stun. Nope, I got stamina drain. So one of the biggest weaknesses to attackers that can't hold a cane or something, and typically they don't, is that stamina regen. Like, if they lose their stamina, they are forced to essentially recharge. They can't do much more. Um, here's that stun skill. See how it comes in handy? You can just stun. So Jakuin Sword kicks in. Cane Sword kicks in. I think they've both used already, although I still have the healing on the Cane Sword. Watch, yeah, Cane Sword. I can still heal, so that's still cool for him. Um, so in this case, let's see. I'm hoping I get that 
I'm hoping to get my uh, my skill back soon. My peer skill. But again, now I have no stamina, so I have to... Oh! Oh! Okay. Okay, check this out. Um, he has recently stunned, so it won't work. Here, let's recharge. Alright, he healed. Thank goodness. Quicksand, Endless Endurance. Okay, I got my ult. So, okay, this is awesome. Alright, check this out. Dinner in Hell. Alright, so again, Pierre, I don't think he had Megaton or anything, but basically it's just, it's it's like a guaranteed stun. If they don't have stun immunity, it, it is a guaranteed stun. It is awesome. Alright, so I wanted to showcase that. Let's go ahead and exit out. And yeah, I mean, he's a straightforward monster. It's just that Pierce mechanic. It, it's weird. Using it, using it, using it right now from the perspective of an offense, from an attacker, I don't see the biggest value to it when there's no legendaries on defense. If there was legendary on defense, I would see it more. But I don't know. I'm not... Hmm, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, well, here's a good showcase, right? Like, um, well, let's see if I can OTK Nightingale. It's massive attack, so I might be able to. Let's see. Because Mythic versus Mythic, it's not as powerful if it was like Mythic versus Legendary, where I can definitely OTK. So let's see Nightingale. Got hit with a Direct Paradox, Invader Pitfall, my allies are getting attacked. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, it is powerful, like, no doubt, right? This is no buffs, this is two Strength Runes. And the fact that I can just be like, all right, Nightingale, let's attack you. Let's see the damage output. 170. So if the if the enemy mythic monster is a 150 less than with 170k damage or HP, you're going to OTK actually less than that because you have your double sword relics. So, I mean, if you have them at the same rank as other mythic monsters, rank 5, rank 5, if it's a rank 4 versus rank 4, if it's rank 3 versus rank 3, and you're doing your We Are Warrior skills, the pure skill, you can basically kill everyone regardless of whether or not there is a Daedalus on the field. So, that is pretty cool. Oh, here's the evasion. Yeah, here's the evasion. So, I would have been able to showcase that too. Um, if, let's see. If if it didn't have a 3 gene cooldown, that would have been easier. Um, but that's fine. That I don't get to showcase that. Here, Omega. Ooh, even even a better reason to kill. But yeah, once you, once you essentially do that, um, for the next three turns, you're not going to be able to do much. You know, especially if Daedalus is on the field, you're going to have to try to kill him. But you have, I think you'll have only Earth-based attacks. You don't have any special-based attacks other than your Pierce skill. Here, we'll just recharge the Master um, Invader Pitfall. And the Bodice's Armor. Laser Beam Sword, Body Acceleration. Um, here we can at least stun Daedalus. All right, I'll have it next turn. So what do you have? Positive Effect Protection. All right, I'll just recharge all right, recharge again. And here, this time I think I'll go for Miserus. Here, let me grant myself evasion. This time I'll go for Miserus just to um, take him out so he's not doing resurrection anymore. Ooh, I got hit with the alt. Moon jump. Stun. See, that a stun trait would have been very nice. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. All right, full fortress. All right, what is going on? Do you have taunts? You have the megaton. Perfect. Um, I am going to give myself evasion. Dragon Slayers, and then I'll just recharge twice. Oh yeah, there's that stamina again. Fortunately, no stamina is an issue for him. Alright, it's also an issue for my Ragnarok. Alright, so I lost my monster. Let's see if I can revive him. Here, we'll speed this up. Omega, Dream. Okay, we will... I uh, will bring back Ragnarok. That way I at least come back with double double damage. Now that I need it, again. Um, he, Miserus has less than 140, so he would die regardless. Um, here, let's protect myself a little bit. Let's recharge. All right, let's do Undead Ritual. And um, we are Warriors. Watch. Oh, he doesn't even have anything. Oh, so it's fine. Boom. Killing Miserus. My Dragoon Sword activated. And yeah, I mean, he's a straightforward monster. It's it's that Pierce mechanic that's his main thing. And it can OTK, which is what we wanted to find out. It is a powerful skill. It is very powerful. The enemy would have to have a life rune like on Miserus for him to not get OTK'd. Um, here are some legendary monsters, so I suppose I can showcase that. Um, it's Saiyan Miss instead of a top monster, so that's fine. Here, let's battle that base. And let's click fight. So yeah, imagine Saiyan Miss. Let's see what Saiyan Miss does. Okay, cool. So I get to showcase this. Um, if, if it is Saiyan Miss and Saiyan Miss activates cooldown, um, you still have a super strong skill you can utilize and kill that Saiyan Miss easily. Um, here, we'll restore the dream. We'll recharge. Um, the other thing, um, in this case... It really works better if there was a Erder or an Armor Claw or any top monster. But just to show you guys, AoE skills, obviously, they do not work on these monsters. They do not work whatsoever. Um, we'll recharge here. No rest for the Wicked. Oh, gosh. So many negative effects. Ah, recharge. Thank you. Zero damage. 
Oh my gosh, so many negative effects. Recharge. Show must go on. See how pesky that Grokon is? Recharge. I could have probably um, tried to attack. Recharge again. Now best show on earth. Wisdom of decay. Alright, hopefully I can res. I should be able to res. Let's see if we can restore. Double show. Mega possession. Um, recharge. Yeah, this battle did not go as planned. Just because I wanted... Um, well, well, that's that kind of even my argument. Like, again, Grakon and Wormlad, even if you kill them, um, are you really killing them because they come back to life? So let's see if I get a chance to resurrect again. I might not because I'm possessed here. My cooldowns are active. I don't think this battle is going to go anywhere. All right, let's try to find that um, Wormlad, Grakon, Armor Claw kind of base. Ooh, the trophies are dropping. All right, we have Simus, Daedalus. We have Daedalus. Um, here, let's refresh. So yeah, we're starting to see more and more data lists. There's a Cawthor. Okay, perfect base right here in the middle. Let's click fight. So here, here's my argument against um, Vastas and having that um, pierce skill. So if I do it, right, and if you look at the relics, they're always going to hold a rival. If I go first, even though I, I, let's say it's an Urder, let's say it's an Armor Clods Brutalizer, they have the Tom mechanic, right? All single attacks are directed towards them. If I go ahead and kill Grakon, what ends up happening is he resurrects, and then because the way the turn order works, Grakon's typically running three three um, speed runes, he'll still go next in the turn order, and he'll still be able to do his Denia skills. So, in terms of taking on the legendary defenses that are commonly Wormlad and Grakon, I don't know how effective it works. Again, taking on Hornet, it definitely makes sense, because Hornet can't hold Revival Essence, so you can kill him, and he's gone for good. But Grakon and Wormlad, I feel like they'll still... They'll still be meta, even even if it's from the perspective of you fight a Vastas on defense. Um, he's still probably gonna kill you. I wonder if we can make Vastas fast enough where he gets two turns in before Grakon, and then no, but then again, you can only pierce once, and then it's gone. So, hmm, I don't know how well it necessarily works out for offense. But again, we did see. I want to emphasize, we did see that in terms of. Oh man, I wish I had it again. I wish he had more pierce skills. We'll we'll probably get a monster with more pierce skills. That way we can, we can like, not get damage reflected and everything so often. Um, but here, we'll just, we'll go ahead and kill Grakon again. Um, we will, here, let's exit out of this battle. Um, there's no denying that on the same ranking, like you saw, rank 5 versus rank 5, um, you could OTK whoever you want with the skill. Um, so let's see, 150 Miserus, let's see what we have. Let's see, who's someone that would normally be tanking Nor on Dana, no... Um, unspeakable see the right there I could kill Hornet with that unspeakable base and he'd be gone for good. All right, here are 150s. There is that data list. So here we'll take on this base here and attack your Miserus. I love it. All right, so Miserus will go first. He'll do his thing. Okay, cool. He also has that damage mirror. So I resurrect. All right, watch. Okay, yeah, he has 162. He has 162 HP. Um, he has Megatons. He has uh, Anticipation, 100% Damage Mirror. None of that matters. Here we go, times one. We're Warriors, and boom, 170. Yeah, so I imagine rank four versus rank four, you'll be fine. I imagine rank three versus rank three, you'll be fine. Keep in mind, you also have your short Relics dealing that extra damage. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially it. That's his main mechanic. He can OTK Mythics on the same ranking, so that is quite powerful. There, You can knock on that. Um, here, let's see what else we can find, if anything else. Um, anyone who would be tanky? I'm hoping there's a tanky Miserus, but I don't think those exist. They're all attacker Miseruses. All right, we'll try this base here on the left. Um, let's put in some defense attack team. Let's go ahead and put on a Miserus. And what other mythic monster would I use? Um, Zorky. You know what would be cool? You No, it actually wouldn't work out. All right, let's do... Zor let's just... Um, Miserus is fine, and I guess... To stop Nor from attacking me a lot. All right, let's see if I can OTK on Dana again. Oh, under 170, I should be able to. So click fight, and yeah, on Dana having 142, that should be fine. Ooh, that Nor is stronger. Oh, okay, the relics. So when they have relics, though, then that becomes an issue, right? Because when they have relics, here we'll attack on Dana, and then Kane Sword kicks in, Jakugan Sword kicks in, survived. So. It's not foolproof, right? Especially if they have relics. Maybe if I had laser beam sword, a double laser beam sword with that extra power at the start of the battle, then I'd be able to do it. But yeah, when when you factor in relics, um, it definitely becomes a lot tougher um, to be able to finish them off. Here, we'll do this. Um, and yeah, the, after you do your main attack, 
right? After you do your main attack, now you're forced dealing with the Daedalus. You're forced dealing with the other monsters. If there's no Daedalus, it's cool because you can go into a stun and then you can attack. You can do all that stuff. If there's a Daedalus, ooh, taking him on with Vasta as your main attacker, uh, that's definitely an issue. As you're seeing here, Earth on Earth damage, it just never bodes well. Here, we can at least stun him. All right, let's hope Miseros doesn't get his stamina drained. All right, bite, trade disable. All right, cool. I can res. Oh, I don't have stamina. Never mind. Yeah, stamina is always an issue for non uh, stamina monsters. All right, let's go AOE quicksand. Come back with the sword. Quicksand, quicksand. And Morg's armor. Um, Splatter, Abyss staff. And yeah, I think we can just end it there. So I'm curious, guys, based on this video, based on what I went over, based on like my pros and cons of the monster, what do you guys think about him? Now that you've seen him in actual action, are you as afraid of him as you thought you were? Ooh, there's more 150s. Are you as afraid of him as you thought you were? Are you like, you know what? He's not that bad. If it's same level versus same level, he's not that bad. Obviously, if you're, if you're fighting him on defense and he has an advantage on you, um, the ult alone is dangerous. Yeah, see, when there's no extra armors, easily. Bye-bye, Moon Haze. So that is formidable in its own right. But there, there again, there's that revival. And now you're like, ah, now what do I do? Um, let's see if he blinds me or something. See my relic kick in. Nope, got stunned, got sunburned. All right, luckily I can do Archangel's Blessing and we can go from there. Actually, here, let's give him two turns. So we'll do this. And then, and now we will, yeah, now we just finish. Oh yeah, Megatons. So single target, my relics kick in. Um, the relics are a good way to just also deal extra damage to that monster that uh, revived with the Revival Lessons. Cardo said halts, Pump Seed Staff, Remember Me, the Boris's Armor. Yike, Miserus is going to die. Ooh, he barely survived. Um, Fortified Tower, Sleep Under the Moonlight. Uh, I think we'll just end it there. So, yeah, I'm curious. What do you guys think? Now that you've seen him in, in actual action, the Pierce mechanic, is it all it's wound up to be? I would say yes. Pierce is amazing. It's powerful. You can kill whoever you want. My issue with it is that the monsters you can kill right now, Wormlet and Grakon, they can both revive. So even if you kill them, eh, it's not a big deal. Um, It's cool that you can bypass Megatons, but... If that monster, if the enemy has a revival and resurrects a monster that you killed, or if it's, you know, we just saw Moonhaze, Moonhaze died, resurrected, if they can hold a revival essence, how much does it help? I don't know, if the enemy monsters have a certain HP and have relics on top of that, it's hard to actually OTK them, even with your skill, and then you essentially have, um, you essentially just have earth-based attacks, so if you are taking on the, the current meta dataless bases with two mythic monsters, even if you OTK one of the mythic monsters, um, it's not the end all be all because now you got to deal with data lists. But of course, you have allies, you're going to have mythic allies, so then you can remove positive effects and all. But I mean, as an attacker, do you want to use Vastas? Do you want to use other monsters? I'm kind of, I was kind of sad that we didn't get to fight a Lonrad so we can attack the Sun Protection, but that's cool. So we'll definitely be using this monster for some friendly, um, friendly battles before I get rid of him, and then you guys can kind of play around with him a little more or try to take him on so you can see how scary he is. But now I want to hear from all of you guys. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this monster? Do you think he's going to be meta? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you can, go ahead and give your reason why. And, and once again, a huge thanks to Zoro Point for giving me everything I need to showcase this monster all the way at level 150, rank 5. Thank you guys very much, and remember to subscribe.